What is happening guys? We're Craig and Amy and you are watching King and It! And this is our top 10 things to do in Iceland. So you're planning on going to Iceland? Congratulations my friend, it is literally the bee's knees. So there's two main routes you can do in Iceland depending on time. If you only have a few days then you can do the golden circle but if you've got a bit longer and you want to be like us and be nutters, you can do the whole ring road in Iceland. The whole country. Iceland is one of our favourite countries. And if you're going, congratulations, what a bloody pick. It's going to blow your thermal socks off. Welcome to some of the best things Iceland has to offer. In no particular order. Beyond Borden Beer Spa and Restaurant. So first of all, you get a little tour around the microbrewery and the guys show you how they make their beer. You get little samples. Now you just calm yourself down there, son, okay? Some people drank more than others. Okay, the ladies called our names. We're going in. I think we get robes and there's music and then there's like a relaxation room afterwards. Craig, this is just what we need. Thank you very much. It smells good too, doesn't it? Yeah. There you are, look, the beer bath is extremely healthy for your skin and your hair. So all the beer baths come fully equipped with your own beer tap, so you can drink as much as you want. I was steaming off one. This is one of the coolest things you can do in Iceland. What a time, get yourself in the Damn. beer spa, lad. So after the beer bath, you're escorted upstairs to the relaxation room, where one of the ladies wraps you up in a little blanket, like the little butterfly that you are. Then you go into the little UV sauna by yourself, because you've only got one friend and she faints all the time. Are you for Jeff and real? So when you rock up, it doesn't really look like much, just a pile of rocks. Wonderfully said. When you walk down the steps, you'll be blessed, my brother. Look how clear that water is. It, it feels so hot. <gasps> oh my God, Amy. Okay, all right, you take that camera. Behave oh. yourself, Lou. So this cave is a small lava cave with a thermal pool inside. So it used to be a bathing spot for locals until a nearby volcano erupted and made it unsafe to bathe because temperatures rocketed. But if you're feeling like a rebel, then jump right in, like this fella. One o'clock, there's a humpback whale. So first of all, you get your gear on and ask appropriate questions. What's the chances of the boat tipping over? There are two different boat options. You can choose a small 12-seater rib boat to be extra close to the whales. Or the other option is a massive pirate ship and you get a bird's eye view of the beautiful whales. Both options are brilliant. The first time we did it, we did it on a rib boat. We got so close to the whales. I wanted to cry. I think I did cry the first time, actually. I think you did. It is so amazing, like, to see them in their natural habitat. But then the second time on the pirate ship, having a view from higher up is so cool. You can see them blow into their blowholes and just having a great time. So the best place to find whales in Iceland is a place called Husavik, which, if you're looking at the map, it's about 12 o'clock. If it's one of your dreams to go and see whales, then you will never be let down in Iceland. It's a bloody emotional experience if you ever get the chance. Highly recommend it. When they come up, I'm the only one going, wow, oh my god, wow. <laughs> and everyone's just like, my babes. <laughs> Calm down. Whoa. After the tour, we met a brilliantly funny man called Alba, and he made me try one of Iceland's famous delicacies. Fermented shark. Ooh. Now, what is it first? If you eat it, and this loco snaps, you become member of the Rotten Shark Club, the famous. <laughs> I want the certificate. Fermented shark going in. Cheers. Be close oh, to the hospital for the next two days. <laughs> Waterfalls, bitch. Or she blows. Oh my nan, Iceland is the bee's frickin' knees for waterfalls. The best part is they're all free. Well, apart from a few parking fees here and there. All right, picture this. You're driving around, belting out fierce power ballads from the 80s. Suddenly, you come across a ginormous flowing glacial water melt. Can't stop in stuff, mate. <laughs> They're so powerful and tall, and it's just something about being around a waterfall. It gives you like an electric vibe, like an energy. It's kind of like what I'd imagine being a Power Ranger feels like. Yes. Ah, uh, you're walking. Is it geysers or geysers? 
That was my year, didn't it? Smell baggy. Sulfury. Sitting around 70 degrees Celsius, these things are nuts. Don't stand too close or you'll have no skin on your face left. It's about to kick off. Don't touch it, eh? So we visited the Strocker Geyser, which is not too far from Reykjavik. It happens every three to four minutes and it's the most magical kind of bubblegum blue. Just a sight to behold. Pass a parcel around the geyser. That would be my ultimate birthday. Mavatan Nature Baths versus the Blue Lagoon. We're going to the Mavatan Nature Baths. What are they called? So a lot of people ask us which one is best and there's a split decision on this one. Mine is definitely the Mavatan Nature Baths. Best part about this already is that it's so empty. Like the Blue Lagoon, you're like fighting for space. Packed, yeah. And there's like 10 or 15 people here. And then you've got a colder pool here. And then these are the hotter pools. And then this is the piping hot pool. And also a little tip. Last time I went to the Blue Lagoon, they, they told me to put conditioner in my hair first because the water can really like dry out your hair. Also, top tip of the day number two, if you've got jewellery on, make sure you take it off. Um, you can wear golden, but if you've got like copper or silver on, the water turns it black. It's cheaper than the Blue Lagoon, it's not as touristy, it's a bit harder to get to, and I think it just looks better and it's in a better place. So, I win. <laughs> Why do you prefer the Blue Lagoon? It's just iconic, isn't it? Like, if you're gonna talk about Iceland, people are like, oh, did you go to the Blue Lagoon? You know, it's the most famous of the two, which, yes, it makes it more touristy. Plus, they've got, like, swim-up bars, you can get face masks there, and it's just a bit more romantic. Plus, it is closer to Reykjavik, it's only, like, 45 minutes away, whereas the Mavatn hot baths, five hours round the country. So, so I was about that. So, the Blue Lagoon, first of all, we went there with Mr. B when we first went to Iceland, and it was pretty special. But I think we went on a day where it was overcast, so it didn't look as blue and it was a bit muggy. In the Blue Lagoon, they give you little plastic bracelets to put on and everything you buy when you go into the pool sort of gets scanned onto the bracelet, like your beers and your face masks, your robes, etc. And then you pay for it at the end when you come out. Oh my God, there's a humpback! Springing in naturally next are the natural hot springs in Iceland. That's kind of where they need to be. It's just a spring, just produced by the emergence of geothermally heated groundwater that rises from the Earth's crust, no biggie. Where in the world can you get them? It is just known, Iceland's known for its beauty and its nature, and this is one of my favourite things about Iceland. Look at that for a backdrop, Craig, look at the mountains! We're in the deep end, look, it's so deep. I feel like he's going to get bugs in his ears when he does that. Can camp? Can poop? Got like a little shack that you can undress in and you can hang all your clothes up. You <laughs> <laughs> kicked it right in my face! There's loads of them dotted around the whole of Iceland and some are harder to find than others. Going on a hot pool mission is one of the coolest things you'll ever do on a day out. They're like little crevices of secret bathing. It's by far my most favourite thing about the whole country. Where are we? It's like a, it's the start of the glacier. Not sure what it's called. Draco Salon! Tag! That is friggin' incredible. This massive glacier is a sight to behold. As soon as you see it, you're just gonna be blown away. But the best part about the whole thing, we saw a Jaffin seal. There's a seal! Look at him! As soon as he clocked us, he was doing a little dance for the drone, having a great time. Unbelievably stunning. It is bright, bright crystal, sapphire, clear, blue. An iconic spot of Icelandic wickedness. This is map of Silfra. Can't wait. Are we gonna see, like, fish in there, is it? But I've just remembered, Craig, I get really travel sick when I snorkel. <laughs> now there's cold and then there's silfra. P.S. Don't pee in your dry suit. This is known as one of the world's top diving sites. And trust me when I say this place is pristine to the top ability. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep your clothes on under the dry suit, grab a snorkel and lower yourself in. But when you stick your face in, the whole world changes. Absolute madness. Just look at that! It is mentally clear. You can see literally miles down into the bottom of the it's lake. It's not ocean. It's so clean that you can drink it. Also, did I mention that you're actually snorkeling between two continents, Europe and America? 
And when we went, you could actually touch both tectonic plates. So you were basically in Europe and America at the same time. You're like Christoph Columbus. I will be sending out signed photographs at a small fee. So we couldn't quite make up our mind for what we wanted as number 10 because we did so many cool things in Iceland. So we're just going to tell you a few of our little favourites. The Math Jalfa Vera. One of those was this geothermal area in northern Iceland. It is a high temperature geothermal area with fumaroles and mud pots. This is the most obscure landscape I've ever seen. It feels like you're walking on Mars. There's little mounds with smoke bellowing out of them. There's mud pools that bubble in front of you. It's just like another world altogether. Do it smell like egg? It smelled pretty eggy. Thought it was bloody brilliant, mate. Hey, free smoke, free smoke, hey. Free Another top thing we did was the Secret Solstice Festival, which was bloody brilliant. This takes place in Reykjavik in June. So if you're lucky enough to be there, we would definitely say to go. The calibre of the artists includes people like Rick Ross, the Foo Fighters, Big Sean and the Prodigy. They have epic lineups every year, so make sure you check before you go to see them going. Another little gem that we found if you're heading to Northern Iceland is the Hofsoft swimming pool. It's a heated outdoor pool with breathtaking views of the mountains. If you are lucky enough to be going to Iceland, we highly recommend 150% renting a camper van. Now, not any camper van will do. Cozy campers are the best camper vans out there. They are luxury. Mr. B will make you feel so comfortable. And if you get stuck in the sand, he'll know a guy that'll come and pull you out. That's it. Yay! 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 Cozy campers are the tits, mate. They've got everything you need. There's a heated bed. There's a fridge. You can have a barbecue. Bloody brilliant. The freedom that you get with a camper van will not compare to anything else. If you've got a car and a tent and a sleeping bag, it's just not the same. You might as well just go all out, enjoy yourself, and get a camper. About time, it's been three days. <laughs> if you want to keep your Iceland trip really cheap, you need to go to Bonus. Summer in Iceland is between June and August, and in these summer months, it does not get dark. There's 24 hours of sunlight. In the winter is November till March, and during the winter months there can only be two to four hours of sunlight a day, but you do have a chance of seeing the aurora. So all in all, Iceland is definitely a brilliant place to go. You have to go at one point in your life. And if you don't, shame on you. We've had two visits to Iceland, so you can watch both of our trips, we'll link them at the end. And everything that we've done on these trips, we will link at the bottom of this video. So if you are brand spanking new and you've just found this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the little bell so you get notifications for new videos, and make sure you press subscribe. Or I will attack your grandmother. And if you're not new guys, then thanks so much for sticking with us. Thanks so much for all the support you always give. Always remember, it doesn't matter what you do in life, if it's your job, if it's your kids, if you're gonna travel, to rule your own world. One, two, three, bye!